Mike, you have a beard and trendy glasses. Do you enjoy listening to records? This feels like a trap or like you're putting me in some kind of box, so I refuse Someone's to answer. Someone's pretty touchy, especially that this week's topic is a set of golden records. We have to say it like that every time. I'm not going to. Is this for when someone sells like a bunch of albums? Like you sell like a load of albums and you get given a golden record? Yeah. It's not not really that at all. Okay. Today we're going to talk about the golden records that are affixed to the side of the Voyager space probes. And one day might point the way for intelligent life to find us here on Earth. Is that a good idea that we want that? In most movies where this stuff happens, humans tend to lose. Unless they, I don't know, they give the spaceship a cold or something like an Independence Day. Yeah, but I think in the second one, the aliens come back. I didn't watch the second one. I did. I forgot there was a second yeah, one. Yeah, I think it was really bad. <laughs> we need orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the two Voyager spacecraft. Okay, so they were first launched in 1977, designed to photograph bodies in the outer solar system. In fact, Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to have ever visited Uranus and Neptune, which makes me feel, I don't know, kind of bad for them, lonely out there. Yeah, we need to go back. Hashtag see Neptune. Get us started. Do we? Is, should that be top of the list to go into Neptune? I mean, compared to what? Like Mars? We're going to Mars. Not yet. Any day now. Yeah. <laughs> Those flybys took place in 1986 and 1989, respectively. Since then, the spacecraft have been speeding away from the sun in different directions. Voyager 1 indicated that it had reached interstellar space in August 2012. Murph. Murph! Make him stay, Murph. <laughs> Don't let me leave, Murph. <laughs> Don't let me leave, Murph! <laughs> <laughs> and reach the edge of the sun's influence some six years later. That's not to say they're out of the solar system. That will take another cool 14 to 28,000 years. <laughs> That's so long. It's so long. <laughs> 40 years and then 28,000 years. Uh, so we have the, the Oort cloud. It's this like very outer boundary of things that orbit around our star. Got to go that. It takes a long time to get out there. Uh, we're into that kind of stuff where I don't like to think about it. Like, mm. we're in that kind of territory now. Uh, like, I just watched a video about black holes because cause that video about black holes is like these things. Sometimes, like, I don't, sometimes I feel like I don't want to talk about these, like, th or think about these things. Uh, and it's gotten like a bit further away from anything humanity's ever built, conceived of, or could see. I don't like it. It's, it's a little weird. Mm hmm. And while neither Voyager spacecraft is heading toward any particular star, it is possible that our little spacecraft could encounter or be spotted by intelligent life at some point in the future. If that were to happen, each spacecraft has been outfitted with a golden record before being launched into space. The contents of the record spans all sorts of things that we'll get into in a minute, but President Jimmy Carter's words summed it up pretty nicely said, this is a present from a small, distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts, and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. It's pretty poetic. I don't, I don't imagine Jimmy Carter actually wrote that, but no. it's credited to him. Let's take a quick break. This episode of Ungenius is brought to you by Privacy.com. Privacy is a tool that makes it easy to manage your financial lives online while keeping your most important information secure. By generating virtual numbers, privacy masks your bank information, so you never have to worry about giving it out to people you don't know online. We've all been in the situation, right, where you're trying to pay something online or set up a transfer, and you feel, you feel a little weird about it. I've definitely been there before, but with privacy, you know that your data is secure, and that's obviously important. You don't want your bank information floating around out there. So take back control of your payments. Decide who can charge your card, how much they can charge, and how often they can charge it. And of course, you can close cards at any time. Plus, you can make sure that you were never accidentally billed twice or upgraded to some other service without your consent. Privacy is partnered with the good people over at 1Password. You can create, use, and save privacy cards directly within your 1Password dashboard. And all virtual cards created in 1Password have the same security benefits as your other privacy cards. So you can set spending limits, create single-use or merchant-locked cards whenever you want. 
Head on over to privacy.com slash ungenius to, to sign up for an account. New customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase. That's privacy.com slash ungenius to sign up now. Our thanks to Privacy for their support of the show and Relay FM. So the idea for the Golden Records was shepherded by American science writer Timothy Ferris, not Tim Ferris that you're thinking of. The 40-hour golden record. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this took almost a year, so, you know, it was before he was the 40-hour guy. Right. Ferris worked with famed astronomer Carl Sagan and a committee selected by NASA that uh, they were tasked with basically putting the content of the records together. Like I said, it took almost a year with the final product containing records of sounds, spoken language, and music. Also included are some black and white and color images, as well as an hour-long recording of the brainwaves of Anne Druyan, who would later marry Carl Sagan. During the hour-long session, she pondered the history of Earth and humanity, the problems facing modern civilization, and what it was like to fall in love. She was uh, dating Timothy Ferris at the beginning of this, but ended up marrying Carl Sagan. That's a weird and interesting tidbit. Another weird and interesting tidbit is Sagan's team wanted to include the Beatles song, Here Comes the Sun. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's such a great choice. It's just a beautiful song. Yeah. So good. One of my favorites of all time, actually. Well, here's the thing. The record company EMI, which held the copyright, they said no. Whatever lawyer made that decision was a moron. I mean, are you worried about piracy in the outer solar system? If Intelligent Life rips off your song, you have bigger (laughs) problems than the copyright. (laughs) Let's walk through the sections of information that f- exist on this record. The first audio section contains spoken greetings in 55 languages. The exact greetings do vary from one another, but they all offer welcoming words to any listener. The second audio section is named Sounds of Earth and contains recordings of things like insects, thunderstorms, tractors, birds, and even the Apollo 15 Saturn V lifting off. The next session contains 90 minutes of music from around the world. Some of the most famous examples include music from Bach, Chuck Berry, and Mozart. But no Beatles. No Beatles. Up next were the brainwaves, as we already mentioned. Then a collection of 116 images detailing life on Earth and the planet itself. Many of them included markings to indicate time, size, or mass. And the last two photos were made up of that Jimmy Carter quote that you read earlier. I cannot imagine being in charge of a project like this and having to pick all this stuff. It seems very daunting to me as well. You're kind of representing Earth to the whole universe in a way. Into all of history, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's like it's not just all time, it's all space, it's all of everything. Carl Sagan said this about it. The spacecraft will be encountered and the record played only if there are advanced spacefaring civilizations out in interstellar space. But the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. That's really nice, but Mike's here now to send all of this crashing down to reality. If aliens or whatever were to find these things, how would they know what to do with them? How would they know that they weren't like a weapon or some kind of food or a frisbee? And honestly, all of it is kind of pointless because they wouldn't be able to understand English anyway, right? Like, what can you do with this? In a way... for. Or not just English, just any type of human language yeah, is probably right. a better How thing, would they so. even know it's writing? Yes. In a way, this seemed to be the hardest part of coming up with what these records should be. So each record is covered on the side of the spacecraft, and the cover contains a set of images about how to play the record and at what speed based on the wavelength of hydrogen atoms in a way that I don't fully understand <laughs> isn't this one of those things where it's like we should have waited <laughs> we, we should have waited until we were past records <laughs> as the as the medium for this to be stored on you know like if if you could just show press this button mm. you know and like an mp3 begins i think the fact that we have to try and explain the speed that these yeah. golden records need to be played at yeah not great well if it had been like another like two or three years it would have been laser discs that would have been worse <laughs> That would have, well, um, and cooler at the same time, but also worse. The the cover with the images on also includes a pulsar map showing the location of our solar system in space. In case they want to come to visit, we're this way, Earth. Don't like the visiting part. I kind of have a little bit of a fundamental issue sometimes. I don't know if we should get into this now with some of the stuff that we do with space because it's like, should we be poking too much up Mm. there? I don't know. 
I don't know, man. Um, Maybe it's best if we stay under the radar. Yeah, like, let's just deal with the things that are happening on the planet. The, I, I, look, I support space exploration. I do. Like, But sometimes I'm like, maybe we're just pushing this a little bit too far. I don't know. We've got some stuff going on down here that we need to take care of as well. Where the golden records have shown up in pop culture over and over, as you can imagine. They just grab everyone's imagination. From Star Trek to the West Wing and beyond. The collection of record content and more information can be found in the 1978 book Murmurs of Earth, the Voyager Interstellar Record. I think it's without a shadow of a doubt, this is the most far out topic that we've covered so far. That's true. Thank you to Alan for sending this in. Thanks, Thanks Alan. Alan. If Alan, if you're an intelligent life form beyond our solar system, uh, let us know on Twitter. We should, we should like propel this episode out into space Mm, i'll get on that oh quickly before we let you go september is childhood cancer awareness month september is right around the corner and for the third consecutive year we at relay fm are supporting the life-saving mission of saint jude children's research hospital finding cures and saving children cancer kills more children under the age of 14 than any other disease Doctors from all 50 states and from around the world refer their patients to St. Jude because they have the world's best survival rates for some of the most aggressive childhood cancers. St. Jude also provides thousands of free consultations for doctors treating children worldwide, including kids in your community. So if you want to join us in supporting this cause, go to stjude.org relay and donate. This year, any donor making a single gift of $100 or more will receive the exclusive sticker of thanks pack at the end of this campaign. You can slap that on the side of a spacecraft, and in 28,000 years, it'll be beyond the Earth, uh, beyond the reach of the sun. Easy. Think about that. stjude.org slash relay. Let's cure childhood cancer together. If you want to read more about the Voyager Golden Records, you can head to our website, relay.fm slash ungenius slash 136. There you can get in touch with your own favorite Wikipedia article. You can also find us on Twitter. The show is at Ungenius. You can follow Mike as I-M-Y-K-E. And you can find me there as I-S-M-H. Until we spin our next record, Mike, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, y'all.